Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. The prophecy that I have for today is a very old one. It is from August 17th, 2022. So in just about two more months, it will be two years old. And this prophecy that I received from the Lord is concerning the kind of swift and visible judgments that God will be moving in. Initially, when the Lord showed me this prophecy, it was coming at a time where he was delivering very strong words in June 2022, July 2022, August 2022, September 2022. I've made reference to that time period in this ministry very often because that is the time period where God was really opening up the kind of sinful posture that people across the world are taking. So the prophecy that you're about to hear has nothing to do with America exclusively. This is an international prophecy. If you have these kinds of events, these kinds of actions going on in your nation right now, if you live in a country that does this kind of stuff, if you live in a kind in the country that is starting to open the door to and become more permissive to this kind of stuff, then when you see the Lord begin to move in very spectacular and also supernatural and terrifying ways, you will know that you were warned in advance. So in June, July, August, September, and even October, 2022, the kind of prophecies that the Lord was giving me um, were primarily directed towards the type of debauched and wickedly sexual immoral activity that human beings are getting up to across the world. By the Holy Spirit, I was shown things that never would have crossed my mind that people are doing. The kinds of things that God was bringing strong judgment against. The kind of things that the Holy Spirit was raging against in prophecies such as the penalty of error in the body where God was judging and exposing in full the debauchery of the same sex lifestyle that contrary to the messaging that we are receiving all around the world, that this is as equally legitimate a style of sexual and moral interaction between people as God's original design, the Lord definitely does not and will never hold that opinion. Just a moment, please. The Lord was revealing what people do in the same sex lifestyle and the fact that the same sex lifestyle and the same sex pursuits, the things that they do in those communities are leaking into the heterosexual community. So the lifestyle of anal sex is not limited to two men. It is now practiced by two women and it has made a resounding splash into the intimate behaviors of heterosexuals. This is a man with a woman and a woman with a man. The Lord is enraged at this behavior. And around June 2022 is when God started to expose it. He was exposing it in the power circles. He was exposing it in the circles where the athletes are, that many of these athletes are in love with each other, female to female in the WNBA, male to male in the NBA, in the NFL, anywhere you can look Football stars around the world, it doesn't matter how much you love the Premier League, are in bed with each other, man to man. The Lord was exposing what young people do. The prophecy is called the next generation inherits nothing, where God was exposing that the most depraved sexual practices are practiced among people as young as 10, as young as 12. Nine-year-olds and even younger are looking at illicit material, porn. I'm not going to bite my tongue or mince my words because those listening, many of you are the parents of children who are at the lip of hell with the things that they do, but you are ignorant of what your children do because as God has constantly said here, children nowadays, including Christian children are skilled at the con. Your children are skilled at putting on the persona that they notice you like. The persona that they know you like, the persona that you will buy Nikes for, the persona that you will take them on trips and holidays and buy them all the gear that they like, these children know how to pretend to be that child. Some of these children even pursue good grades simply as currency against their parents. If you're the kind of parent, we'll give you money for this, we'll give you money for that. It's not bad to reward hard work, but if you are not raising the child up side by side with the kind of things that the book of Proverbs and the book of Ecclesiastes teaches people about how to raise their children, your children very soon understand that 
mom and dad have money and mom and dad give money for this, but mom and dad do not reward this kind of behavior. And so they become like Pavlovian dogs, except that these are very cunning dogs. They know how to trick their parents to do what the parents would like on the surface, but inside the soul of the child is very dark. The soul of the children around the world is very dark. The soul of Gen Z is very dark. And these were the kinds of things that the Lord was revealing much to my stupefied shock. And so in 2022, God was speaking very hot words and harsh words. He was speaking about the sex trafficking houses here that we have in the United States. Um, the prophecy is called the sex industry flop house. And in that prophecy, God was showing me these really big, fancy looking private houses and mansions that sit on a lot of acreage. And when you look at it, you will just think, oh, some wealthy dowager lives there. Some very wealthy old woman who maybe lost her husband in the seventies and she never remarried. She lives there. Absolutely not. That house is for trafficking men, women, and children. That house is where the wealthy and the power elite go. Not only the government power elite, but that kind of house, um, in the south i was seeing them but those houses exist everywhere they're called flop houses they even have flop houses where only gay men go you will only see men 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 going into that apartment building and coming out no women no kids no families no pets you will just see men coming and going at all hours of the night and god was showing me that america is home to a lot of rank and defiling stuff that the very surface of this country has already been ceded to Satan. And it is unfortunately the Christians in this nation who continue to lie to themselves. And of course, because they are in cliques, they lie to one another that America is doing quite well and we are in the middle of revival. We are actually on the way to serious judgment from God. And this prophecy somehow has been in my archives. And it is from August the 17th, 2022. And the title of the prophecy is Fire from Heaven. And so on that morning, I was not sleeping. This prophecy and the visions that I saw were delivered to me while I was fully cognizant, fully awake. God told me that morning that he was going to kindle a fire upon people who walk in immorality and sin. So when you hear God traditionally say, I will kindle a fire in the Bible, he's usually saying how people who have been engaged in constant sin it's usually a community that god will speak about like that it's usually a community and usually it was israel but sometimes it would be egypt sometimes it would be the ammonites the philistines moab the jebusites whoever was overflowing in sin at that time until the wrath of god and the ire of god was drawn to those people when god says i will kindle a fire in their midst he means usually that he is going to use various means to stir up that population to its inevitable judgments. So kindle a fire usually means that God is perhaps going to cause the economy to go sideways, or God is probably going to cause maybe the social structure of the country to break down or allow the social structure of a nation, a people to break down. Sometimes it means that he will stir up the enemies of those people from another place until the enemies become riled up enough because of the spirit of god the enemies won't become agitated on their own it will be god putting that in their in their core in their midst until they rise up and come to attack the people that god wants to punish however this fire that god is talking about is actual fire it is physical fire it is fire that burns flesh. It is fire that burns hair. It is fire that will disfigure, mar, consume, and eat away skin. And this is what God was saying, that he's going to kindle physical fire upon people who continue to walk in immorality and sin. The Lord says that he will visit such people in fire and with fire for their arrogance and wickedness. It takes a lot to incur the wrath of God. God is not inherently a wrathful person. As everybody loves to repeat the world over, God is love, God is love, God is love, yes. But God is not exclusively love because God is not a flat piece of cardboard. He's not one dimensional. If you get your Amazon packages in a box and the box is not flat, it's not one dimensional, but it has front, sides, top and bottom, then why would you want God to simply be a flat sided cardboard that only has one emotion? Why do people hijack God and try to chain him to only love? 
And yet, if the same people see a child being sexually abused, they are lit up with rage. Do you assume yourselves more righteous than God? That you're capable of love, but also capable of righteous anger. You have a sense of justice. You know when things are imbalanced. And there's something in all of us that when we see imbalanced and unjust situations, we want something to be done about it. This is why we have the court system. This is why we have leaders. This is why we have authority figures. This is why we have police. This is even why our world contains the first authority figures that any of us know our parents why is it that we accept and we can see that there is an agenda a structure for justice and organizational righteousness built into our societies even if those structures are failing at the moment and not working if we can see our world with structure and organizational righteousness and ways to balance the scales when they get out of balance why would you assume that the person who created this world and created us and who is the author of all our structures before they began to fail why do you think that his one job is to sit around like a teddy bear like santa at the drugstore or at the mall and just pump out love and nothing else why would the eyes of God be closed to injustice? Why would the eyes of God be closed to immorality? And if you can get angry over the things that you see, what makes you think that God, who created you in his image, is not also capable of anger? God is capable of anger, and God also mingles his anger with great patience. God has borne with the nation of America, and in fact, all the nations and all the peoples in the nations for very long. But we have finally come to the point where because of the time structure and because of the return of Jesus Christ, which has already kicked into motion, the earth will no longer be allowed to hide or cover sin, immorality, transgression, or outright rebellion against God. And as God was telling me that he will visit people in fire, and with fire, to be visited in fire is a lot better because when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were put into the fire, God was with them in that fire. God came to them in their extreme moment of distress, a moment that came upon them to take their lives. The Lord turned it around and made it a glorious miracle that was one of the building blocks in the heart of wicked Nebuchadnezzar, who continually acted like he didn't see God when Daniel and people like Meshach and the rest of them were right in his face, modeling proof that God is a living God, that God was there and ruling with his people. And so to be visited by God in fire is better because the fire of God, for instance, that is here at the master's voice is the thing that sets many people who are going astray back on track. When the fire of God that is in this ministry impacts you, you sit and you think about your whole life. You think about the whole 50 years that you've been alive. You ask yourself, what have I been doing? Many people are practicing just a straw Christianity. And so when the fire of God in this ministry comes, it burns it up. And some people get offended, which is the wrong response. You can't be offended that you have built a straw house, a wood house. If you had built something with gold and silver, it would remain. Even if you built something in brass, it would remain. But if you have built a straw Christianity, a wood Christianity, and the mere preaching of a human being can burn it up, how will you stand before the everlasting Lord? When you stand before him who has been described by John the Revelator as all fire, what will you do? The man who is fire from the waist up and fire from the waist down. How will you stand before him if you cannot even stand before earthly preaching? What will you do when you stand at the judgment throne of Christ? And so God was saying that he will come to them in fire. And then he was saying he will come to them with fire. When God comes to you with fire, that part is definitely a hot judgment that not everybody gets to walk away from. There are people who have been judged by God in the fury of God, and all they are now is a footnote in history. The only people who remember them are their family and friends, and sometimes not even that. Another thing that happened is when the Lord was telling me this, he gave me my own warning, which you will now hear. The Lord gave me my own warning about how he will judge me, and you will understand from this, or perhaps you will just act deaf and you will not, but you will understand from this my approach which god gave me from the beginning even before this prophecy he will always give me reminders and here is just one of the many reminders i get from god i have sent you to speak to these people to warn them of a great evil that i intend against them i have told you to speak all the words that i will give you and indeed 
you will speak them. There is a reckoning coming for every person that will determine their placement with me. But before I judge them, I will check to see. Did you tell them all the words of my mouth or did you leave any out? I will determine this first before I judge them. And if you told them, they will bear the full penalty for their sin. But if I find that you did not tell the full matter as I said, but have kept back any part of it for fear of them, the judgment will be on you and not them. And so there are those who come here and they complain that the prophecies are too graphic and this makes no sense to the thinking adult because the rapes that are happening out there are graphic. Someone is exp experiencing that rape in real time. And while I am not there personally, if the Lord comes and says, the wicked of the nations do this and that upon the woman, who exactly are you to tell me to what point I should speak what God says? What placement do you have in this earth? If I am standing between you in your finite representation as dust and God who has no parents and no birthday and no death day, who are you to tell me to what level of explicitness, so-called explicitness, I should give the prophecies of God? If the small four-year-old child is being violated, and I am describing that I see elites gathered around the children, putting them on white cloths, so that as they violate the children in their backsides, the blood from that encounter falls on the white cloths, and then the elites take the white cloths and go away with it as trophies, as mementos. Who are you to tell me that something that happened in HD IMAX horror to the child, an explicit deed happened to the child, who are you to say that you're too good to hear it? Even the child's parents, when they get back their damaged child, if indeed they are so lucky, even the child's parent is eaten up with questions until that baby can finally articulate because he grows from age five to age six, age seven, and then he is able to give speech to the damage. So in this country, social workers go to work and they develop the same iron soul that I have. They can hear what is happening in the homes of America, but the complacent chipmunk cheeked overweight church of america is so pristine and their robes so white that they don't need to know the details they don't need to know the details of the human sacrifices taking place under their feet while they're spending money on junk at walmart they don't know need to know the details about what the people they love he's a good man the people they love in the pol in the political spheres the people they love in the movie world the people they love in the music world they don't need to know what those people do. And the reason that you don't want to know is because you don't want to have utopia shattered for you. How dare anyone tell you that America is not as peaceful and beautiful as you want to believe it is? How dare anyone drag you from your seat of Pharaoh where you can survey your domain and say it's a great country. It's a great country here. Because once you find out that they eat children here, that thing tends to color away the greatness and it makes you upset. That's why you rage against the most high, but you will not be successful in it. When God chooses someone and God, de de he intends to get the fullness of his investment out of that person. That person will be put through their paces in such a way that that person becomes almost like a trusted guide dog that is so highly trained, guide dogs, police dogs. They are so highly trained that at the sight of their masters, they go into readiness position. Only if the master says, okay, stand down mascot, stand down Ted, then the dog is relaxed and the dog is happy. But at the sight of the master, a dog knows, there's my blind master. I've been trained that my master can't see. And so those kinds of dogs are not playful. When people are out with seeing guide dogs, the owner always asks, please don't touch the dog. Please don't feed the dog. Please don't pet the dog. Why is that? They don't want the dog to be moved out of their training. But the church globally, worldwide, for the most part, has been trained by Satan. The church has also been trained by jesters and clowns and very, very slick wizards in the pulpit that have trained the church to see a God who has no wrath. A wrath. They train the church to believe in a God who has no an anger to the point that the church, when you tell them that God is angry, they are shocked 
and offended because what right has God to be angry? What is God angry about? And the reason that many people even genuinely have that shock is because that they don't know that there's anything going on for God to be mad about. It's the, it's the first they've heard that God is mad. But some of us, it's not the first that we've heard that God is mad. Some of us have been hearing God for years and years and years. In my case, before 2012, when God started speaking a particular stream of prophecy to me, God would always tell me and show me how people do not satisfy him because people always want to give the most compromised version of Christianity to God. The cheapest thing that people have available, the cheapest amount of respect. They will respect the mayor of their city before they respect God. If the mayor says this and God says this in a prophecy, they'll go with what the mayor says. If the president says this and God says this in a, prof in a prophecy, they'll say, no, but C-SPAN said this. I don't trust this prophetic word. Who's this person giving this prophetic word? God has trained me. And when you are trained, you look at your master. You don't look at the people around you. The landscape blurs to the back. And so what the Lord was telling me is that I've sent you to speak to these people. And I've sent you to warn of the great evil that I intend against them. The scripture for that is here in Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse 11 and 12. Now therefore speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am fashioning a disaster and devising a plan against you. Return now every one from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. And they said, That is hopeless. So we will walk according to our own plans, and we will, every one, obey the dictates of his evil heart. And so God was speaking here to his people in the Bible, and he sent his servant Jeremiah to tell them that God says that he's actually working out a plan to harm you. God says that he's devising disaster, and he's fashioning destruction for you, and he says now to avoid it, that you should return from your evil ways and make your doings and make your ways good. So you see that prophets come often bearing a double-edged sword. One side of the sword will be bearing the consequences of what will happen. And often, if you read these scriptures, you will see that God often leads with the consequences. And the reason he leads with the consequences is because by the time you see a prophetic voice that is truly from God, I'm not talking about the ice cream type, I'm talking about the real type. By the, by the time you see a real prophetic God, voice from God, showing up to give you a warning it's because the sin has already piled up to heaven this is the verbiage of the bible for your sins O babylon have piled up to heaven so the sin is already a lot the sin is already active and god is already fed up prophets don't just come one time they come sequentially, meaning that they will be coming across the ages. There will be an Isaiah, and then there will be a Jeremiah, and then there will be an Ezekiel like that. And remember, these men don't just come one week after another. They'll be working after each other 60 years here and then 40 years here. And if you look, 60 plus 40 makes 100. That's a whole century that would pass whereby small things will happen here and small judgments and small sadness and getting beat by your enemies a little bit. But the thing that God calls fashioning a disaster has not happened yet. Fashioning a disaster is a 9-11. Fashioning a disaster is a Pearl Harbor. Fashioning a disaster is a blow so great that everybody sits down on the ground and cries. Everybody cries, could be crying angry, could be crying terrified, could be crying with so many questions, but there's just group crying across the board because this is what often happens with people. They're just like children. The parent is driving and the parent needs to focus and get to the destination. The parent will say, stop making noise in the back. That's a sign to start making noise more. The parent will say, stop making noise in the back. I'm trying to read the map here and I'm trying to get to where I'm going. And also you guys are giving me a headache. That's the sign to laugh even harder and start pinching each other because who is mom anyway? Who cares what dad has to say? And so these warnings will keep coming sequentially until suddenly there's a hard jerk to the curb and 19 slaps are laid at the back. After that, if you were to bring the camera close on those kids, they're like this, 
They act as if no word were spoken prior to the time that hands were shared. And this is what people do with God. They utterly ignore God. God will speak and they will minimize the warnings of God. So the warning of God will be at a nine. And then what people think is, that doesn't sound like God. That sounds like hate. This is what I hear every day. This sounds like hate. That woman is so hateful and she wishes death for everyone. How am I going to follow all of you around the world and bring the death on you? People will push God to the place where he will act upon them. And then without repenting, they will then lament against God and say, but why has this come upon us? And this is time and tested behavior from the Bible. And so God is saying to the people in the Bible here, in Jeremiah 18, verse 11, he's giving them a structured warning. He has brought forth first the blade of the judgment, and then he offers a caveat and he says, return now. So you've heard what will happen. So the, the antidote to what's going to happen is to return now, come back from your evil way, turn away from your evil way, and each one of you make your ways and your doings good. Does he say, and then I will come upon you and I will fill you up and I will make your ways and doings good? No. In order to make your ways and doings good, it is you that is going to look for God. God has already looked for you by coming to tell you that the judgment is on the way, that it's surely coming, that he has fashioned it, meaning that he designed it exactly like architects design a house, printed out the blueprint, looked at it and said, right, all I need to do now is hand this to Michael and the others and they will carry it out with exactitude. He's holding a finished product. This is what many people in America and many countries that have come under God's judgment don't understand. They think that God is still musing in his mind, should I punish them? Should I punish them for the human sacrifice? Should I punish them for the drag queens? I'm not sure. He's fashioned the thing. He didn't, he, he's fashioned it. He's completed his plan. He's secured it and printed out. And now the only thing that he's doing is holding it prior to handing it out to the executors of the judgment. As he is in that time period, prior to handing it out, that's where you see people like me. People like me are the mode by which God will speak to you to let you know that there is a sharp blade, but there is a way out. The problem is that in America's case, the blade has fused into one. It is just the blade of judgment. The only purpose that I'm serving here is telling people within the United States, if you do not wish to be cut with this blade of judgment as individuals, follow the second part of the old blade, make your ways and your doings good. And so God says, I've told you to speak all the words that I give you, and indeed you will speak them. And now we can look here in Jeremiah chapter one. In Jeremiah chapter one, God has called Jeremiah and Jeremiah is trying to put forth caveats by telling God that he's too young to speak. But this is what God says to him in verse seven. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. So God is giving Jeremiah here a clear instruction. Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I already fashioned you to be a particular thing, and that is what you are going to be. You, Jeremiah, are not going to tell me that the people of the nation that I'm sending you are too hard, they're too tough, you're not able to handle them, they're making you cry all the time, or you're too young. I have given you my words and you will speak them. So we understand from this verse that this is not the kind of thing that you can take upon yourself. No one takes being a prophetic voice for God, a prophet, in other words, to yourself. It doesn't matter if you put that you're a bio, that you're a prophet in your bio. It doesn't matter if you call yourself a prophet that's coming out from the darkness into the light. You are not a prophet unless you were on God's blueprints. Of being a prophet and you will have all the signs of prophecy the proofs of god's 
calling will be quite visible in your life. You will be able to hear very clearly the voice of the Lord. You will be able to deliver the right now word of the Lord. You will be able to teach the Bible with extraordinary ease because it will become a place that you eat, drink, and sleep and spend the majority of your days. Everybody thinks that prophets spend all their time crying out to God and intercessing uh, for people, but that is not always the case. Once God has said that a judgment is set, the prophet might as well go to work and make videos in her spare time because nothing that is said after a set judgment changes anything. You can cry out to God. You can say, but shouldn't we pray? Shouldn't we pray? You can pray if you want to exercise your prayer muscles, but the result will be the testament of the decision that God has made. Prophets have dreams. They have visions. They hear the voice of God and God is a very narrow road upon which they walk one footstep by one footstep after his instruction and his instruction alone to not do that will lead you here just a moment please to not do that will lead you to jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 17 let me read verse 16 first for context. God says, I will utter my judgments against them concerning all their wickedness, which is what you hear God say in this prophecy here, that I'm fashioning a disaster against them and you will speak all my words to them because of their wickedness. So God says, I will utter my judgments against them concerning all their wickedness because they have forsaken me, because they have gone apart from me, because they have set my laws behind their back, because even worse than just ignoring my laws, leaving my laws alone and leaving them as they are, they have taken my laws and now start to fashion and bend them and twist and pervert them and come up with brand new remixes from my original laws and tell the LGBTQ, for instance, the original scriptures are twisted. This is what God really means because God is love. Don't listen to that dry stuff that's in the Old Testament. Look here at how loving Jesus was. That's the truth of how God will take your same-sex attractions and things like that. And so many people's souls are led astray by false teaching and false depictions of God that are not true to who God really is. But God says to Jeremiah this, he says, prepare yourself Therefore, prepare yourself and arise and speak to them all that I command you. Do not be dismayed before their faces, lest I dismay you before them. So God tells Jeremiah that he should prepare himself and then he should rise up. He should stand up. So this just goes to show the prophetic process. God will really crunch you like granites. You can be the biggest granite rock. See yourself as the biggest Christian. By the time you go through the mill with God, you will come out like little, little grains of salt. He will do you like little finely milled salt that will just drizzle down. That is how you will be. And then he says, arise. That means that you will stand at, stand up at a certain point and you will be visible to the people. And then God says, Speak to them all that I command you. This is very important, and many people don't understand that about prophets being sent to them. People really think that prophets are jukeboxes. They also think that their pastors are jukeboxes, and they think that anyone who carries the visible gifts of God actually is a jukebox. A jukebox is just an old-style music contraption that has a lot of records in it. It used to have a lot of old, you know, the old records that play. And then what you would do is you would go to the jukebox and punch in 621 or 143. And then each of that relates to a certain record. And the jukebox will pick up that thing and put it there and play it. And they used to have it in a lot of public places here in America in the 50s and 60s. So that when people go to diners and people go to other public spaces, Everyone can get a chance to go up to the jukebox and punch in their song. And then you listen to someone else's song and you listen to the second person's song, but you're okay because you know your song is coming. That is what people attempt to do here all the time with a 100% failure rate. Praise the Lord. You cannot come to this place and use the comment section as a kind of 126 or 16 to hear your favorite song. Celestial, has God talked to you about this? Celestial, how come you didn't speak on this and that conflict happening here? I don't work for you. It's as simple as salt. It's as simple as looking into the Bible and looking at what God says in Jeremiah chapter 1 and 17. He says, you're going to be prepared and then you're going to rise, meaning I'm going to bring you now before the eyes of the people and you will speak all that all that the people command you, all that the Americans want to know about, 
all that the Ugandans come and say, is there a prophecy for my country? All that the people in Paraguay want to hear God send a prophetic word for them. I've often said quite gently to people outside of this country, if you don't hear God talking about your country, you should all get together and have a party. You should all get together, text one another, send gifts to one another, and have a party that I have not spoken about your nation here on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. Because the odds are 99 to 99.1. That should I say the prophecy for today is about so-and-so. By the end of the prophecy, you're going to be crying. You're going to be upset. You're going to be sad. And you're going to be very scared as well. This is an end times prophecy blog. When I'm speaking here, it is not usually positive. When I'm speaking here, it is usually the judgment of God because he has reached his limit and he has handed over the blueprints to the executors thereof. So in the warning of God that you are hearing here, the scripture says, speak what I command you. That means no more, no less. Don't hold anything back from them. And why did he say that? Because a reckoning is coming for every person. This is around the world. This is if you are young. It doesn't matter if you are young. If you are young and rebellious, God will judge you according to your age. And the reason that God can judge a six-year-old perfectly is because God knows the heart of the six-year-old. The six-year-old's heart is not hidden. This deception that is in modern Christians today in the world, nobody can judge me. God knows my heart. Everybody can judge you because your fruit is top-notch evidence to what is in your heart. Your speech is also another way that people can tell what is in your heart. If you're one of these snowflakey people that claim, oh no, I'm open-minded and I love truth, but as soon as you hear the truth, you're melting like a sugar cube in the rain, your heart is very evident. It is very evident, for instance, that the church loves to be coddled in this time. And the church truly only wants to hear victory messages. And this is because the church is struggling to pay its bills. The church can see that the world is becoming increasingly unhinged and increasingly difficult to navigate. And instead of wanting true teaching that will build them up to meet the challenges coming their way, they greatly love to hear Maranatha teaching. They want to hear that life is suddenly going to skip over everything that is happening. And in a blink of an eye, they're going to go from halfway paying their mortgage to suddenly and we will ever be with the Lord. The church wants to be turned aside to fables. And there are many false teachers who are filling that massive gap. Because why not? That gap usually comes with a good, good paycheck. So they're willing to lie to you for the sake of your peace until the end times when 2 Thessalonians 2 will come to pass and a great man, a horn, speaking blasphemous words against the Most High will arise to trouble that peace permanently until Shiloh come. And so... God was saying that a judgment, a reckoning, a testing, this is to look you up and down and see what kind of life have you lived? What kind of person are you? What kind of behavior do you have? What are you following? What are the secret thoughts of the Most High? God will discern the thoughts of even the children because God formed the children and God knows the motivations of the children. You will not be able to stand in front of your child to protect your child from God. You don't own that child. God owns that child. God owns the child's breath. You can never stand in front of God for your children. The time that you're supposed to stand in God for your children is when you're supposed to intercede that they be not carried off to evil. But when he now comes upon them suddenly to judge them, as you will hear in the lower part of this prophecy, it'll be often too late for you to stand up and do anything. The time to have stood up, the time to have in fact bowed down to seek after their souls, to seek mercy, would have already gone, would have already shut so God says that a judgment, a reckoning is coming for every person, an assessment, basically. And before he renders a judgment on his findings, God says that he will check people to see, did I tell them all the words from his mouth or did I leave any out? Did I bring out the full viewpoint of what God has to say about ex-president Donald Trump, for instance? Always a flashpoint here on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. I've made it clear that I'm not interested in American politics, but people insist that I must care on the inside if I prophesy about Biden, Obama, or Trump. I have to care. I'm not allowed to speak God's words unless I actually care about particular subject matter. And the reason people say that is because they care very deeply. They can barely get any sleep as we head into November 2024. 
God says he will check. Did you tell them all the words that I said, Celestial? Or did you hold back some of the words because the words felt too brutal? Did you hold back any of the words because they kept complaining that the words were too many? Did, did you hold back any because you saw what they said as you and your moderators moderate the comment section and they seemed very unhappy with the fact that there were no positive prophecies and they made sure in their thousands on all your platforms to let you know that it's time for a break and some positive prophecies. Did you begin to flinch, Celestial? Did your face lose its flinty shape and start to look like a spongy marshmallow because the people were upset and you were seeking to please them like all the rest of the fake colleagues calling themselves prophecies, uh, prophets on the internet? God says he will check and determine, did you tell them all the words of my mouth or did you leave any out? I will determine this first before I judge them. And if you told them, they will bear the full penalty for their sin. Imagine that. So you heard 10 prophecies and you decided, no, I had a check in my spirit. The everlasting check from Bank of America and Chase. I had a check in my spirit. The Holy Spirit told me not to listen to her. The schizophrenia. The Holy Spirit gives the prophecy and then runs to your house to destroy you and tell you not to listen. God says, if you told them, the full penalty for their sin. This is judgment with not a shred of mercy. Main meal, no sides. For sin. But if I find that you did not tell the full matter, as I said, but you have kept back any part of it, for fear of them, the judgment will be on you and not them. Let's look at the last sentence in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 17. God has said to Jeremiah to prepare God has said to Jeremiah that you will rise. God has said to Jeremiah, you will speak to them everything that I'm commanding you to tell them. And then he says, do not be dismayed before their faces, lest I dismay you before them. This is actually a strong message that God basically gives to all fivefold. And that is this. Do not be swayed by the people in front of you to speak good only or to withhold bad or speak bad only and withhold good if I have told you to speak good to them. And the reason that God says that you should not be dismayed is usually when you are one of the people who has been called and given an all bad message. Jeremiah was a person with an all bad message. Isaiah had a little hope in there. Ezekiel did not. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all bad message. Obadiah, the prophet, all bad message at least for one side. And so when you receive a particular commission, God knows what you will go through. God knows what you will face. God knows what, you, what will be said about you. God knows how people will respond to you. And therefore he tells you not to give in to dismay. Dismay is the experience of feeling your heart start to shrivel up and go down because of what you experience on a day to day to day to day to day basis. Dismay is a kind of feeling that just feels like there's no hope. It can change everything about you because you start to feel, well, well, where's God in this? Where's the good in this? And God is telling Jeremiah early that by the time you get through your life's work of a 40-year persecution, being called a liar, being thrown in the pit latrines, this is the toilet built into the underground dungeon part of the city where everyone's personal matters are just flowing down in there. They threw Jeremiah in that up to his waist. Jeremiah, by, by the time you find that even your own family members are talking about you, gossiping you about you, and also joining with the government to get you killed. By the time you find, Jeremiah, that your own brothers are throwing in arms with the princes of Judah to take your life, you will feel quite low. But God is telling Jeremiah not to change his, word, his message because he says, if you do, I will dismay you before them. God is just basically saying, I'm going to humble and shame you if you shame me, Jeremiah, in front of these people. If you backtrack and you give them a softer message, Jeremiah, if you backtrack, Celestial, and begin to shave off the prickly parts of the prophecy because you can see that they really don't do well with it, what I will do is I will humble you in front of the people. And nobody, at least nobody in their right mind that I've seen in the Bible, would want to find out by which way God will dismay a prophetic messenger. But there's one example of how he did it. 
There's a story in the Old Testament of a young prophet that God gave a particular message. And God gave the message. It was such a short message. And God gave the stipulations for the message. Stipulations means the protocols, what you're supposed to do. He told the young prophet, go to the town, deliver the message, do not spend the night with them, turn and leave and don't stop anywhere else. Go back to your village or go back to your town or where you came from. That was it. Go to them, deliver the message, do not stay with them, turn and don't stop anywhere and also don't eat anything and go back to your village. Pretty straightforward, easy to understand. The young prophet heads to the place. Step one, he gives the message. Step two, he doesn't stay the night with them, which already is unorthodox in ancient Israelite culture because always they are told, open your door and give food and rest to the stranger. We see Abraham doing that with Jesus Christ himself, with God himself. When he came as a man, he had Sarah prepare food. He even prevailed upon them by asking God and the angels so much to eat that they sat and they consumed food with him, even though they didn't need it. They did it out of politeness in the human body. Yes, they were able to take those nourishments because Abraham's his hospitality was so strong. Please stay with me, stay with me. And that's how it is. We even see Lot with the same hospitality. When the angels came, he said, please come and stay at my house. That's because Lot didn't want these handsome men to be gang raped by the sodomites that he lived with. So the young prophet is able to make his way there. Check one, deliver the message. Check two and resist staying overnight with them. Check three. But on his way coming back, he was met by an older prophet. And many people think that the older prophet was deceptive. He was wicked. He was not. The older prophet went because he also was sent. And he said to the younger prophet, come and stay the night and stay with me. And the younger prophet said, no, I'm not supposed to stop anywhere. And I'm also not supposed to eat. And the older prophet says to him, God says that you should come and do it. Why would God give you strong instructions and then send a random person to counter your strong instructions. Why do so many of you think that the angel of second thought has visit you, visited you and sent you here to this blog to keep telling me what to do, how to do it, how to speak, how to sound, how to deliver a message. This is a nation that does to babies what only the ancient worshipers of Molech do to babies. But then you want to hear the prophecy of a nation judged for abortion. God is not happy, America. It's a shame what we've done, America. Who are you to stand up and deliver secondary instructions? And what on earth, this is the part that puzzles me all these years, what on earth makes you think that I will exalt the word of your mouth over the strong instructions that I received? The young prophet was fooled by what the older prophet said to him. He turned aside, stayed at his house, sat down and ate a meal. And the minute he did it, the older prophet said to him, you are dead. You are dead. If being dead is not one of the greatest dismays that any of us can come across, then I'm hard pressed to think of what else could top that. The older prophet said to him, you are dead. Did not the Lord give you instructions? And as a young man now, of course, is trying to fix it. Of course, he's trying to fix it. And he's heading home. He met a wild animal. I think it was a lion. And it killed him. It killed him. You, when God speaks to you, and then you need to add a little sprinkle and a little razzle-dazzle, you will meet the lion on the road. You, that God speaks to you, and then you are riddled with the fear of man. You want to be liked so much. You want to be known as the person with the sunny prophetic channel. Why are you even on the internet? Why are you even here? If you cannot give full expression to what you were what you were told to do and so god says that <clears throat> to not keep the message he will dismay me in the presence of people and i've always said from day one i can't have that and the last thing um 
God says that if you have kept back any part of the message because of fearing them, judgment will fall on you and not them. And so the last place that we will look scripturally to bear up everything that the Lord was saying, because his words always bear up to those who know where to find his conversation. But to those who do not know, they are the ones who always say, but doesn't the Bible say, once you start a sentence with that, most people just move on because that person doesn't even know anything about God. We're here in Ezekiel chapter 3, and I'm going to read from verse 17 to verse 27. It's 10 verses, so let's go. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, that same wicked man will die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Yet, if you warn the wicked and he does not turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because you did not give him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he has done, shall not be remembered. But his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous man should not sin and he does not sin, he will surely live because he took warning. And also you have delivered your soul. Then the hand of the Lord was upon me there, and he said to me, Arise and go out to the plain, and there I shall talk with you. So I arose, and I went out into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there like the glory that I saw by the river Shabar, and I fell on my face. Then the Spirit entered me and set me on my feet, and spoke with me and said to me, Go and shut yourself inside your house, and you, son of man, surely they will put ropes on you, and bind you with them so that you cannot go out among them. And I will make your tongue cling to the roof of your mouth so that you shall be mute and shall not be one to rebuke them for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with you, I will open your mouth and you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God, he who hears, let him hear. And he who refuses, let him refuse, for they are a rebellious house. And so God is giving instructions to Ezekiel here about this same Israel, God's own people that he is so familiar with their ways, their habits, and what is inside them. And he's saying to Ezekiel that there's a standard here, and you need to be very well aware of the standard, my standard. This is right at the beginning of Ezekiel's ministry, mind you. This is Ezekiel chapter 3, and these same instructions down the, down the years, down Ezekiel's timeline of doing this work, these identical instructions come back to Ezekiel in Ezekiel 18, and they come back to Ezekiel in Ezekiel 33. So when I'm saying that God often reminds me, do not lose sight of who you serve and why you are here, then people will wonder, why does she keep this pace and how does she keep this consistency? But that's because I have a coach that you, some of you pretend not to see. Some people pretend that these prophecies come from me. The size of the prophecies, the volume of the prophecies, the speed of the prophecies, the range of the prophecies. People convince themselves in their mind that one woman is sitting and writing all these things out of nowhere, just out of the clear blue, thinking, oh, another topic, I'll write that. And then writes it, ties it to scripture, and then the best part, hires her friends in Hollywood to make it happen and be on the news. This is the best part. That powerful network writes the prophecies year in advance and then sends a phone call to Putin and says, come and put ships in Cuba. Come and do to America and start having your naval exercises off Miami's waters. Come and do to America what America is doing in Ukraine, what, is America, what America is doing to China, near to Taiwan and Black Sea area. Come and play in America's backyard. That phone call came from my house. Did it not? Did it not?
God is telling Ezekiel, here is the protocols, for there are protocols for your ministry, and I will remind you of them. When I send a word, and the wicked is performing wickedness, and the word comes and says, O thou wicked, wherever you are in all the seas and all the nations of the earth, O thou wicked, hear the word of the Lord. Depart your wickedness, for the sword of the Lord is coming. God says, Ezekiel, if the wicked takes heed and changes his way, he will not die in his wickedness. He has delivered himself. And also, I will not hold you accountable for his blood. Why is that? Because the word that changed the wicked came from Ezekiel. Ezekiel spoke. But should Ezekiel keep quiet and the sword is coming and the wicked knows not of it and the sword takes him away so that that man dies rightfully in his sin, God says, that he will hold Ezekiel responsible for it. Yes, the man will die in his sin and be judged as a sinner, but that judgment, God says, the blood of the man will be on Ezekiel's hands, for Ezekiel heard God warning all wicked, and Ezekiel decided not to speak. In the same way, God says, when it comes to righteous people, and the righteous man begins to stray from righteousness and go into sin, and Ezekiel blares forth, there's a trumpet, the sword is coming, righteous man, return to your former conduct. And the righteous man hears it and runs back. God says that the righteous man has saved himself from the judgment of being wicked. And he will not die. And also there will be no blood to be on Ezekiel's hands. But should Ezekiel not warn one that he sees straying from the laws of God. And the sword comes and takes the righteous man. The first thing God says is nobody's going to remember that he was righteous. If you are righteous and you die in a bed with a woman who's not your wife, nobody cares about your 45 years of being a good husband and father. You're going to die and become known as an adulterer and everyone at the funeral is going, how could he? That is going to be your legacy. That you had a heart attack upon the breast of a strange woman. That's how you'll go out. Your children will be stuck in the posture of hatred. It will be very hard for them to forgive you. That you died like that and all the neighbors found out about it and that you were trending on Facebook. If the righteous man is caught in trespass, God says that if he dies like that, he's not remembering any righteous thing that he did. And also Ezekiel will pay the penalty. The prophet who does not speak what God is saying when the sword is coming because of popularity, because of wanting the people to love them, because they want likes, because they want their videos to trend and they know that heavy videos do not trend. Because heavy videos in America and around the world generally are always false prophecy. So say the unrighteous people. God says that that blood will be at the prophet's hands. And so that is simply the warning that God was strictly walking me through with scriptures so that I could not mistake and misunderstand him. Now, as God was talking to me, I started to see this judgment that he was talking about. I started to see some of the forms that it will take. I've shared many, many examples of how God will judge people here. So no one can say that they don't really know. But this judgment that I was seeing, remember the prophecy is called fire from heaven. And it is August the 17th, 2022. I saw something like the impact blow of a great hammer hitting something, but drawn like a comic book or a cartoon. Now, you know, in a comic book or a cartoon, when a person puts their arm like this and they're about to fly, they put the movement underneath the arm. And then they also put speed lines to show you how fast the superhero is flying in the same way. For instance, Thor, if Thor swings his hammer like this, they will show the curve of the hammer to show you the direction the hammer originally was. And then the curve also shows you where the hammer is heading. The other thing that I saw besides the great hammer on its way to hit something and the curve, the curve of the mark from where it started onto where it was going, I saw the impact of the hammer of God. And there was a massive explosion type drawing it's usually a big one with spiky edges and then it's many different colors it can be green yellow pink with a red center or something like that to let you know look at the reverberations of the blow and the word pow p-o-w for the impact was there the hammer the curve of the hammer and then the impact blow with a big explosion type thing and the word pow was there so I saw that hammer swinging very freely in the population, very freely, and it was hitting people everywhere. But before the hammer hit people, I saw that God was true to his word, 
and he was doing exactly what he said. I saw the Lord was assessing people. So I saw, as it were, a gaze, and the gaze was closely looking at people from the top to bottom. God is not going to actually come and inspect your house. He's not going to need to look in your wallet. God has no interest in looking at your bank account to see what you spend your money on, um, dirty websites, dirty movies, prostitutes. He doesn't need to do that. Every single cell of your body records every single action that you have ever taken. Your body is nothing but a computer that God will simply say, download data, and then it will tell on you like you never believed. Your heart will tell on you. Your private parts will tell on you. The stench of what you do, your mind, the thoughts that you entertain, the things that your hands have touched, what you have put in your mouth in any other part of your body, it will tell on you with such precision that you will want to melt in the presence of your own soul when you see how your body stands up and says, yes, we go here, we do this, and these are the friends we keep. This is what we like. This is what is in our pocket right now. Weed on the left side, vape pen on the right. This is who we are. I saw God simply looking at people with a gaze. It was just a gaze that was going down and scanning them. And he was checking how they lived, but he was also checking what I had said to people and did they know everything from his messages. Now listen to this because this is key. I did not say that I saw God checking whether people agreed with the messages. I did not say that I saw God checking when people said, I'm disturbed about this, Celestial. I did not say that I saw God checking whether people accepted the messages. He was simply checking if they had heard the messages and if the messages they heard were accurately given by me. That's all he was looking for. Did you ever hear the Master's Voice Prophecy blog? And did you ever hear fully what she said? I've warned many of you that when you come here, you bring your background with you. You bring your personal thoughts with you. You bring what uh, Pastor Boyd and Sister Pemberton taught you. You bring your beliefs. Your belief systems are often at the front and then you put God's word at the back. And the struggle that you have is that every time God's word does not line up or back up or support or agree with your belief system, the choice that many people make is to throw the prophecy out and then say, I just don't believe this. So you will hear a prophecy about Obama. And then the next thing, when I come back here after two days to curate the comment, it will say, um, I, I, I agree with some of the other things, but Obama, I just don't see it. I think you're wrong. You need to go back to God and check. And so I saw that he was checking people to see what had I said to them. God will not check you about what you hear in the prophecies. You should read Isaiah 6 and 10 if you are an American especially, but also if you are an American supporter, you have the same spirit that is upon the, the nation of America. And that spirit I've shared in many prophecies is a curse that is upon the nation. And Isaiah 6 10 just basically says that the eyes of the people are shut, that seeing they still don't see. And the ears of the people are shut with this curse so that hearing they still don't hear. And it says that the people have been made dull. Sin has made them dull. Disrespect has made them dull. Lack of practice of how to serve the real true God has made them dull. But either way, that dullness is a spiritual curse so that when I say things here, people don't hear what I say. People hear amazing variations that they create for themselves. And then they go all over the internet and say, Celestial said this. It's the worst case of broken telephone that I've ever experienced in my whole life. And if you were sitting where I'm sitting, it's actually terrifying. It's terrifying to see spiritual things at work among people who are alive at the same time as you. Because the prophecy is so easy to understand. And I put so much time and effort into explaining every line. People will listen to the whole thing and then come underneath and say, so are you saying, and then what they will write, it might as well have come from Golden Girls because it has nothing to do with the actual message. It's terrifying to watch spirits at work on people and they're not aware of it. And they'll write it with so much attitude too. Like the thing they're saying is so correct. So I saw him checking them and had they been told what the cost would be to them of continual sin, 
Had they been told what the cost would be of stubborn refusals to listen to the word of God? If God saw that they had heard and they had heard the full word, then I saw him judging them by the fact that they had heard all his warnings, but they did not change their ways and they did not repent after hearing his judgments. So basically he judged them by Ezekiel 3, he judged them by Ezekiel 18, he judged them by Ezekiel 33. So when I was seeing God doing that, it really strengthened my resolve. I became even more resolved to be exact and precise and diligent with the prophetic word of God. Remember, God was talking to me and he was showing me visions and he was giving me instructions and he was giving me um, clear directions on what to do. And that's why I'm reading you the scriptures that I was given and I had to understand my assignment and how to execute that assignment. The cost is too high to me to step aside from those directions. I'm somebody's child. I'm somebody's beloved daughter. There is no way that I'm sacrificing my life in disobedience to please a disobedient population. That doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even make sense. It's not even, it's not even a worthwhile trade to me to be popular in front of who? To be liked by who? Let's assess these things. The Bible says, let's come and bring our strong reasons to be popular but to, in front of who? To be liked by who? A nation that's going to end up burnt to cinders and all the people in the nation, the ones that God really, really love, he's either going to take them off this earth, they will not be alive anymore, and the ones that he really, really loves a second, because the Bible tells us the dead in Christ will rise first, so obviously they get preference. The ones that God really, really loves second, they're going to be crying in Guam drinking some hot pina colada virgin version and people asking them all the time, how did you end up here? What did I say in the old prophecies is the punishment of the survivors. What have I said is the punishment of the righteous. This is top notch righteous. God really loves you and he saves you like little pieces of wood out of a burning fire. What did I say is going to be? even your punishment as the righteous, to sit in Guam, to sit in Beirut, to sit in random countries that right now, if they gave you a million dollars, you would never go there for holiday because you don't like it. And when you go there, the people will keep asking, what happened back there? What happened? And you're going to spend the rest of your life humbly, quietly, a brand new person reciting over and over, we were sinful. We were wicked. We hated every mercy that was shown to us. We mocked all the prophets that came to us until they got old and gray and very disappointed and died. And then God moved and he took the blueprint and he did what he said we would do. And that's why I'm now here living with you and my three kids and my husband forever. This is our new home. Why do I need to show off in people in front of people like that? Has God prophesied a great glowing future for the United States that I need to get in on? It's all going south. It's all going downhill. It's all going fireball. So why not be honest so that every person can get that CDC, you know, the blanket that protects against fire, that silver one. So that every person who wants that CDC blanket, to tuck themselves and tuck their children into can come to this channel and get that CDC bl blanket and prepare. That's a far more worthy trade in my eyes than being popular. So it strengthened my resolve even more to be precise, to be exact and diligent with the prophetic word of God and to say every last word that I am given without a care or a thought what people were thinking about me because I knew and I felt very strongly that God was showing me what's really at stake in all this, and that is human souls. But he was also reminding me that my own soul will be answerable for all its works. And so I knew not to take the words of the Lord lightly, even if I am in a culture that protests and screams against being told the true word of the Lord and the true requirements of the Bible. It was a very timely reminder to me that I'm expected to prophesy in full. This means keeping nothing back, not hiding any tidbits because I think it might hurt. I'm expected to prophesy in full and also to ignore what people say about it. The only righteous requirements upon me is to speak. 
after I speak, whatever people do with it, believe or disbelieve, it contributes directly to their own judgment of God. Imagine you have an entire channel built on calling these prophecies fault. Woo woo. Finding fault with the prophecies, saying that the judgments of God are a lie, that I'm a false prophet, that I'm lying on God, lying on God to this extent. Over 500 videos done and the number is mounting with every five minutes I get. I'm making more of the prophecies from the blog to finish the assignment. And then your entire persona is built on saying it's a lie. What kind of judgment will that be? It will be better on that day for people who never knew that the work of God, this channel, the master's voice existed, because after all, you cannot judge a man on what he never heard. Anyone who never hears of this channel, God is not bringing this channel into your final assessment. You cannot be judged on what you didn't know. But woe to those who have heard these things and decided that their wisdom is greater than God's. They heard and did not believe. They heard, but decided that they knew better. They were the expert on the prophecies of God, or they felt that they needed the full resume of the messenger first before they could so decide if they would listen or not. What woes God was showing me will fall upon such people, just like it always fell in Israel when God would show up out of nowhere, confirming his prophecies, but also scattering the mockers and unbelievers into some horrible judgment. Here's the vision that I saw. God just set before me one big picture of people dying by fire. If this is not one of the most excruciating ways of leaving this earth, then someone needs to let me know. And this is not when a, fire, a forest fire breaks out. So I'm not talking about a forest fire breaking out and consuming a huge patch of some national park. And then maybe people who are hiking get caught in that fire. It was not. This is a personal fire. Okay. And the way I saw that some of these fires we're starting, I will tell you right now, it is a supernatural fire and I have the scriptures to go with it. God will kindle supernatural fire on people when they're in their beds at night and you will burn in your bed. You will burn in your bed. When the firefighters come and they finally fight their way through the few doorways that are still standing, they will find you a fused up thing. And in their horror, they will just have to look away and say, yeah, um, it looks like the fire started from here. So it is a supernatural fire that I saw. Not all of it. Some of it could be attributed to natural causes. You will hear, we already saw that bus accident that I think happened just a few days. It happened just a week or so after I was speaking about it in March. The video was put up March 18 and the video is called dreams part one and i was saying that satan is upping the ante and the kinds of reports that we're going to start to hear is fiery car crashes and fiery bus accidents whereby the bus is going to go right off a cliff and then it's going to catch fire and the people burn and shortly after that a bus carrying a whole number of worshipers in africa went off a cliff and only one little girl survived it went off a cliff and plunged to its destruction and caught fire and everybody burned to death. Even the people who were flung out, they were on fire and they burned. And it was a very difficult recovery scene for the first responders that came to attend that fire. So I didn't see forest fires or that kind of fire. I saw sudden freak accidents. And I saw other terrible types of situations that resulted in people being absolutely consumed. And when people were in these car accidents and these road fires, road pileups that would result in a fiery crash, you know, you smash the cars and then the cars burn and the people in the cars burn. The cars catch fire so quickly that nobody's able to get them out. That thing was the judgment of the people who were burning in these road pileups, burning in these car accidents, burning in these boat accidents like that. It was actually their judgment in fire with fire, which I described to you at the beginning of this prophecy. But I also saw fires eating people up in their homes. People just basically, there's this odd phenomenon that people haven't really understood how it works. Spontaneous combustion, the, the whole human being just catches fire like that. That is what I saw. People just burn in their bed like that, but also 
mistakes happening at home that burned the whole house and the person burned in the house like that it was actually a judgment of course it will be reported terrible tragedy here tonight but inside some of those terrible tragedies that are real terrible tra tragedies is the god of vengeance judging people with fire from heaven which is the title of this prophecy and so so the most particular thing that i saw was that i saw people at big events dying from fires the kind of events mind you it was these big events that usually have no control over what people do that do there so these concerts i've been speaking just mentioning this prophecy that was coming in old ones that you that keep going to these concerts fires are going to break out at these concerts and i'm going to tell you now because god told me to tell you everything and i'm going to tell you exactly what i know is going to happen it's going to seem like when you're in these events that the fire will break out and everybody will rush to the exit and then they will say a, a terrible section what makes this so much more tragic is how the doors jammed the doors are not going to jam demons are going to hold those doors they're just going to lean on them and you won't be able to get out people will be pounding at all the exits i'm telling you now so that you can truly learn to come out of this posture of unbelief you are a christian it is the deepest embarrassment i think an embarrassment greater than sin and is unbelief it is the greatest shame as a christian that you can ever have upon you that you are in a faith where one of your names is believer and then you don't believe anything you're just like a flat sheet of paper with not a sentence not not even a full stop on it to say okay this is the Bible says mustard seed of faith. If you've seen a mustard seed, it's literally like taking a pen and going, do. it's like a full stop. You are in a faith that speaks of faith, that speaks of believing, and you believe nothing. Everything is, I don't believe this. It doesn't sound plausible. I don't trust this. It is a, it is a heinous embarrassment to one who, as we come into walking with Christ, we are taught to lean ever further out of our personal knowledge and into the fact that with God, all things are possible with God. Literally anything can happen. God set a bush on fire and the bush did not burn. God opened up the sea and a group of people whose descendants are still alive today walked through the water. And yet the word has now been handed to a generation that believes nothing, a, a generation that will trust Siri before it trusts a servant of God. It's terrifying. You will go to these concerts and those doors will be supernaturally locked. Even the security, the security guys don't usually get to enjoy the concerts. Some of them in the front, yes, but the majority of them are stationed at the exits. They will tell law enforcement, I was standing by this door and the door was open. The door was open. The kids were coming out. Some were heading to the bathroom. Some of them were heading out to go do whatever they wanted to do. As I was standing here, this heavy metal door slammed shut and I heard it go click. And I was yanking on it and I called Hopper. I called Hopper and I called Dan on the walkie talkie to get over here. They will see the door like this. The door will be like this. That's how those men will take iron chairs and try to break it in as they hear the people cooking on the inside of the concert. Not every concert is an outside concert. A lot of these concerts, they take place in these massive places, domes, whatever they are. Madison Square Garden, places like that, the beams will cook, the doors will lock. And the punishment for gathering into these places of iniquity, let me explain to you. These places are places where people go, the event organizers, once they get the tickets and scan you in with your little band or your little stamp at the back, they don't have any control and they don't bother to exert control because all they wanted was the money and the attendance to look good on the, the highlight reel later. We will see highlight reels with many bodies covered with white blankets, blue blankets, orange blankets, whatever color of blanket is available. If you are a young person and you have ears to hear, if you are a parent and you love your offspring, do not hate me because I am matter of fact, because you are being told now before anybody at your family has to cry. So after the fact, beehive, if you still want to, fry, to cry, then go. Please go. As long as you go with the knowledge, because that might be the last thing you hear in your ears. Some people is my voice. What a horrible way to leave this earth. The woman that you hated, 
that thing just comes on and starts playing about what you were told and you, you disdained it. They will beat that door until it caves like this, but because it's an iron door meant to lock up these domes so that nobody breaks in and steals millions of dollars of equipment in between shows, you won't be able to open it. Some of these doors, they have that funny push latch, right? You just press it and it has that little spongy, that little spongy thing, and then the door just opens. They will push that thing and it will be as hard as a, a rigid, as a, as a plank of wood. It will not bend in. The doors that just, you punch it and then it just swings out. That door is a fail safe to make sure that people can always gain exit because the bar is on the inside. You simply press it and that big metal door goes, goes open. That bar will not press. It will become locked in place. That's because you don't know demons. You don't understand demons and you don't understand their commitment to ripping us out of our bodies before we make decisions for God, before we come away from our sin and walk back to God. You don't understand that that is their number one passion, to catch you slipping, as the children say. Events where they have no control over what people do, the events where people have sex in the bathrooms, events where there's a free flow of drugs, events where there's loud secular music and the general mindset is this YOLO attitude. You only live once. You only live once. That's where I saw horrible judgments breaking out on masses of people. And the result that we started to see worldwide was terrible headlines and very high death tolls. I saw these big, horrible fires happening on those events. And a lot of people died at one time. One of the events I saw was a pride event. It was an indoor event. And I saw cinders. I didn't say sparks. Sparks are different. Sparks, you can locate it. It is when a cable for a microphone or a cable to one of the sound mixing desks, it has to be a cable. It has to be a plug or something. It has to be an electrical outlet that is perhaps overloaded, too many musical instruments, the guitar riff is too long. And then sparks begin to go like this and then maybe something else can kindle maybe there's some bags nearby or something human fires natural fires always have a point of origin this is why we have experts to track them what i saw was the little lost flakes that come from the outdoor fire falling from the sky at a pride event an indoor pride event there's no fire in the sky that we can see but I saw the same cinders that come off a log fire, those little, I saw them in the air. They formed and they fell down on the people at the pride event and the people were burned so badly. They were burned so badly that the majority of them died in that place. I also saw fires breaking out at big concerts. I saw fires breaking out at private events and even social gatherings at people's private homes. I saw the fire of the Lord kill people and i'm not saying that in every case that the fire came from known human sources as i've just explained not every fire was because someone had taken the last of the pasta out and forgot to turn off a burner not every fire was because candles were left unattended when they said marcy come down the family's here and then she was burning candles upstairs maybe to scent her room or maybe to contact mother goddess whoever and then she left the candles burning and the candles did their thing when a gust of wind put them put the curtains over them those are natural causes that we're quite used to i'm not saying that a barbecue was left unattended it wasn't always fires from car crashes it wasn't even arson no i cannot say to you that it was always natural fire because in one vision that i saw one of those huge outdoor concerts like coachella like Burning Man, I'm just, let's just go with Coachella because this thing was massive. We're talking lots of bodies in the space. People just go out there to this kind of concert for days and days and days. There's no police. There's just free sex, every debauchery under the sun, so many drugs, and also a very strong focus by the organizers, but agreed with by the attendees idol worshiping of the, the singers the musicians oh no he's like a god and the goat and idol worshiping and also satan worshiping 
the images that they're showing, the holograms at these concerts, what will it take for you to finally realize that it's time to hang up your boots, repent, and stay home? Anyway, in the midst of all that, I again saw these strange cinders. The cinders formed in the air. The sky was there. They were all watching the musician. And all of a sudden, these fire embers formed in, let's say, the twilight sky, and they began to lazily drift down out of the air. As they came closer and closer towards the people, suddenly these people's hair caught fire and their nail caught fire. I'm not saying that I saw contact of the cinders like it set, because even if one spark falls on your hair, your hair's, your whole head is not going to burst into flame. And this thing, this is what amazed me the most. This thing, skin, it, you know what? You, the blaze needs to really get going for skin to catch fire. I don't even know that skin can catch fire, but these people, their hair caught fire and their skin too. Yet at these events, all the wiring was way up front at the stage. So all the sound check stuff, all the microphones, all the electrical outlets are actually linked to the stage. Where the people are standing with your girlfriend on your shoulders, there's nothing. You're just standing and watching what's happening on the big screen, or if you're close enough to the stage, you can see it. But the fire kindled, not at the front where there was a lot of stuff that performers were using. It kindled among the people. And I saw the strange cinders falling out of nowhere to land first on a boy who had dyed his hair platinum blonde and he had no shirt. This young man started shrieking, 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 and trying to put his hair out. And for about 30 to 40 seconds, People are looking at this boy with his platinum blonde hair on fire and he's screaming, slapping himself and screaming in so much agony. And for about 30 seconds, they're looking at him in shock and bewilderment like, what is wrong with you? And then that thing turned to, how did you get on fire? And then right after that, it turned into more shrieking because that same fire suddenly mysteriously started kindling on people too. All their clothes, their hair, and their skin started burning out of nowhere, and the screams of these people was so terrible to even hear. They were shrieking. They were trying to run. Some of them were falling down and trying to put themselves out, but it was like something melted had clung to them, and they were literally burning up. So if you want scriptures, because a lot of people will listen, and of course, you might have already tuned out by now because you're just thinking this is too much. God doesn't do this. I've always said to you that this is the channel that has prophesied that the sea will open and that you will see Leviathan and all his cousins down there. This is the channel where the sea is going to in the future, if you are still alive to see it, this sea will become drier and drier because the heat that will come to the earth will be a heat unheard of. The seas will start to dry up. And as the seas are pulling back, you will see nothing that human being has ever mapped known was there or named with those fancy latin names that they give new species they're already starting to find new species and people are very off put by what they're seeing but the sea has creatures that are so large that when they come out you will be able to stand in one place and just watch their body lay there and when they die and stink, remember that God said that that stink that we will be living in is also our punishment. We will live in heat. We will live with no seafood. Everything that we eat in the sea is going to dry up and it's going to leave the kraken and its relatives and it will be seen. And they will die, some of them, these massive creatures. They will stink. And God says, you will live in the stink. Have you ever smelt dead fish, dead octopus, dead anything from the sea? He said that stench will be part of my judgment upon you. That thing will die and the sun will cook it for a month. All the people in that area, when the wind shifts, instant downgrade on the real estate. This is a channel that tells you that, that the creatures in the sea, unknown to man, the creatures that they draw in the ancient European books where they just show nine arms coming up and Eight of the arms are holding different boats. And then maybe some of the arms are holding the sailors about to put them into the mouth of the creature that is not visible because the thing has no head. It is just a big bulb and the mouth is actually underneath. You've seen those woodcuts. You've seen those carvings. You've seen those books, some of you. The modern generation thinks that the ancient people drew those things because there was no Netflix and they were bored and working on their art. They drew those things 
and they would write things in their books like, here there be monsters. But now we alive in the age of Alexa, in the age of unbelief, we think that everything of the past is a lie. If you will see those things, then fire can come down from the sky and consume people who sin. And so in 1 Kings chapter 18 and 30, um, it's about offerings to God. So let's look at it briefly. It's about the offering that Elijah made, basically, whereby uh, he was challenging the false prophets of the day. And he said, he basically said, let, let the people who are worshiping the true God, let God prove himself by fire. So let us build two separate altars and then let us put offerings. Let us put a bull on the separate altar and then let us call individually to our God. The many of you call Baal and then I by myself, I will call on the God of heaven. And then the God who answers by fire, he will be the God of Israel. And so these people called on their thing that they worship for ages, cutting themselves. They were even going into blood sacrifice, cutting themselves for their spirits to answer. And he did not respond. And then Elijah not only put his sacrifice there, but he soaked it with water three times. He said, soak the altar. He said, soak the the meat soak soak the bowl soak the wood that the bowl is sitting on and he dug a big trench until the water ran up into the trench and he called out to god and he said to god prove to these people that i am your servant and that you are the god that i have here represented before them and the bible says that fire fell from heaven it licked up all the water in the trench so this is three dowsings upon that massive bowl the trench is full the trench became dried up the wood caught fire. It went from being wet to dry and the bowl started to cook. And that was what caused the people to return to the worship of God. That's one example of fire coming down from heaven. You have another one in Job chapter 1 and verse 16 where one of the servants is reporting to Job the terrible misfortune that has come upon Job in a single day. And how fire came down from heaven and consumed all the other servants that were working in the field with that servant. Killed all the animals of choice. It might have been goats or sheep. Whatever Job had. Fire came down. This was the fire that came down from Satan. So I'm giving you these examples to show you that before Alexa, fire did indeed used to fall from the heavens. In Genesis 19, a very famous story, Sodom and Gomorrah, we all know that their final judgment was that fire also mingled with sulfur came down and burnt up four of the five cities that faced judgment. Sodom and Gomorrah are just the most famous but the bible says that god judged all the cities of the plain because they were all practicing the same same sex homosexual relations and also sleeping with strange flesh which is the which is the angels might even be the animals for all we know and the last one here not the last one but the second to last is also luke 9 james and john were speaking with jesus and when people were opposing jesus's message they asked him and said lord should we call down fire from heaven like elijah but he gently rebuked them and he said, you don't know what spirit you are of, meaning I'm not in my calling down fire dispensation at the moment. I've come to preach to these people. The fire is going to come later when I'm sending my servants to tell them that I still sent fire from heaven. And the last time, at least that I could find or recall fire falling on actual human flesh, you can find it in 2 Kings chapter 1. Elijah the prophet has been hiding from Jezebel, the witch, for quite some time. And then he comes out and he shows himself to Obadiah, one of the, or the king is looking for him, actually. The king is looking for Elijah the prophet and has sent out soldiers everywhere in companies. So this is not a small group of people. These are groups of soldiers in a group of 50 with the captain leading them because they would call them captains of 50s, captains of 100s, captains of 1000s, according to your skill and your management level of how many men you can command. And so they're looking for Elijah and then they find Elijah and they tell him, the king has sent us to capture you and take you in. And then Elijah says, if I serve the true and living God, if I'm a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume you. So this is Elijah. This, this is Elijah. He will just say, and then in our modern time, that's so cruel. That's not Christian behavior. It's the Christians of today who don't actually know what Christian behavior is against the wicked. God answered that simple sentence and fire came down and ate all those 50 people. 
But then the king, I think it's Ahab, is very much like America. One beating is not enough. We need to do it again. So he sends out a second company of 50 to come and trouble this prophetic man when he's minding his business. And they again come and they rudely tell him that they've come to capture him. And he does the same thing. He says, if I be a man of God, let fire come down. And God sent the fire and ate all those people. They all cooked. Fire came down from heaven and kindled upon their mortal bodies and all of them were destroyed. So it's now that when the third company was sent, the captain said, please, sir, if you would so kindly come with us. And that's how Elijah then himself decided to go in and see what it is that the king wanted. So everything that you hear here, it has scriptural backing. It doesn't matter if the people of today can't believe it or not. As long as it is scripturally represented as God's truth. The rule of thumb is if God did it once, even one time, as long as he is the same God of today that never changes, he can and he will do it again. It is, as I said at the beginning of this video, a terrible thing to incur the wrath of the living God. I am Celestial and this is the Master's Voice. The prophecy you are listening to is entitled Fire from Heaven, August the 17th, 2022, part of a series of prophecies that I was doing in the year 2022 during the difficult times where I was seeing how harshly God will judge sexual sin, sexual immor immorality, but also the cruelty and wickedness that is in the heart of the younger generation, the cruelty that is wickedness and that is in the heart of the politicians, the leaders of this country, the cruelty and the wickedness that is in the hearts of the peoples of all the nations. So I strongly advise that you go to the blog and start to get familiar with the prophecies that are there. There's hundreds of them. I think there's at least 485 of them written down. You're surely not going to finish that in even six months. So you might as well go and start reading because what reading the blog does is like nothing else on all the other platforms. If you are on TikTok, if you are on Instagram, you're not getting the full story. If you are on Telegram, you might be getting full videos. I think the uploads there are the full videos, so you are getting the full story. If you're on Twitter, if you're on Facebook, you're only getting snippets. And if at some point you don't wake up for your own sake and seek out where the full messages are and also go back to where the written messages are so that you can hear what God sounds like in the earth for yourself so that you can become persuaded for yourself. It is not my job to persuade you. It is not my job to remonstrate with you and say, please believe if you don't believe something will happen. What will happen is that something will happen and by God's mercy, if it happens to someone next to you, then you will become convinced. But you may not become convinced and you may think it's just a coincidence and it happens again and it's just a coincidence and it happens again and it's just bad luck. And that means that the fourth re-up is yours because that is just being hardened in rebellion. So there's plenty for people to get started on, especially as you see that we are moving faster and faster towards God is bringing fulfillments of things much quicker, and that's because the track was laid long ago, so at some point it had to start catching up with itself. That is all that we are seeing happening. God bless you. Thank you to those who support the channel. You are appreciated. May the Lord return it to you multiple fold. And if any prophecies were referred to in this message, as always, I will list them either in the description box or you will see a comment pop up over the course of the days where I list the links of all the prophecies that I've made reference to. Please stay away from scammers. Please stop asking me if I have an extra Facebook page or an extra TikTok page. I have only one of each and also perhaps some teaching materials elsewhere, but that is it. And so please do not engage with people that are trying to get your financial information. They're trying to lie to you. They're telling you that if you give a donation, they'll prophesy to you. If you're talking to anyone on Facebook in the inbox or anything like that, TikTok, it's not me. I do not send direct messages. I only have one email and these people have created so many variations of my email to try and get you to hopefully donate to them because you're not careful in reading the information under my video. 
If you want to send a gift, there is no pressure to do so. But please make sure that before you do it, you actually read the instructions. So if the video you're watching doesn't have any instructions under, don't send it until you find a video that does have instructions under. Thank you and God bless you. Until I see you again, goodbye.